Good morning and welcome to worship at Cumberland United Methodist Church, where discipleship comes alive. Where discipleship yeah, I sound great and you look good this morning. I'm so glad that you're here with us in the sanctuary or joining us on Facebook Live or YouTube. By supporting God's work at CUMC, you help the love of God to come alive in our faith community and beyond. So today begins, or to get, today continues, sorry, our sermon series on the Lord's Prayer, and I'll be preaching this week with a sermon entitled, Our Daily Bread, which focuses on a very important section of the Lord's Prayer, Give Us This Day Our Daily Bread. We've got some exciting things coming up in this sermon series, so we hope you stay tuned in. Also, there's a study that began, began a few Wednesdays ago on homebrewed Christianity's guide to being human, a guide to being the best bag of bones you can be. And if you're interested in being part of this study, feel free to email the church office in order to get a Zoom link, or text me if you have my cell phone number. Also, as you noticed when you came in, there was a QR code sitting on the desk right as you entered the sanctuary. Uh, there's also one on the table right as you enter as well. Both QR codes are the same, and they give you electronic access to this week's bulletin. And there are some paper copies available, too, if you need them. Also, who knows what this Saturday is? Garage sale. There we go. Yeah, Ron Dean got it in the back. Uh, <laughs> okay, so this garage sale, or this Saturday from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m., we have the United Women in Faith garage sale. So you still have time. If, you have, if you're thinking, oh no, I haven't cleaned out my closets or cabinets yet, you still have time. Uh, don't forget to clean them out, and you can, bring them, you can bring your items to the church on Wednesday night, Thursday night, or Friday all day. So uh, Wednesday night from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., Thursday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., and Friday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. So pretty much Wednesday night, Thursday night, and all of Friday. And also, if you have any items that you brought today, you can bring them to the multi-purpose room. And this is a wonderful opportunity to raise money for missions, so hope you can make it out this Saturday. And that's time again is 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. We've got some great things going on here in our church, and fall always means that transition to a little bit of a busier season, and so it's exciting time. Um, there's always ways to get plugged in. Stay tuned to the website, to the Facebook page, or your weekly announcements for more updates. And so now I'll turn it over to Pastor Jill to lead us in our call to worship. Please stand as you are able. Let's join together in our call to worship. Come and worship the Most High, our shelter from the storm. We will trust our God. God delivers us from our temptations and troubles. We will trust our God. God heals us when disease and disaster strike. We will trust our God. God protects those who call out for help. We will trust our God. Please remain standing as we sing our first hymn this morning, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Please be seated. Let's join together in our opening prayer. Holy mystery, protector of the faithful, glorious spirit of wonder, bread of heaven, you have made us a little lower than the angels and crowned us with glory and honor. You have called us to be your witnesses, to proclaim the good news in good times and in bad. Sanctify us and help us see ourselves in you, the living body of the risen Christ, broken and poured out to feed a hungry world. Amen. Now let's enjoy this children's message. Why so funny? I thought you were playing. I was playing. I just keep laughing when I think about the prayer Jesus taught us and how funny it is. Jesus taught a funny prayer? Yeah, the Lord's Prayer. We say it every Sunday. Come on, Becky. I know the Lord's Prayer, but it isn't exactly funny. You definitely heard it wrong then. Here, let me teach it to you. Clap your hands together. Bend your head down at a painful angle. I don't think that you need to do that with your neck. Watch people. Even in church, Beckett. It's like you're not paying attention on Sundays. Okay, repeat after me. After me. Our Father who does art in heaven. That's not. God, the artist, Beckett. Creator of all this beautiful world around us. And guess what? We learned his name finally. It's a kind of funny name. Harold is his name. Harold is his name. It's pronounced Harold. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Who is Evan, Harold's friend? God clearly spoke ahead of time about the movie Evan Almighty. So I know it as it is with God. Because in that movie, Evan was God, I think. I knew when I get that movie. You are really messing up a lot of this. But most of what you are saying kind of works. And it's hilarious. God is so funny. Hear this next part. Forgive us our trespasses. And you forgive those who trespass against us. Trespasses. Forgive us our trespasses. But trespasses still makes sense. It is not into temptation, but deliver us from email. Evil, Asher. Evil. Have you seen what's on the internet packet? Deliver us from emails. That's fair. Fortnite is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You are saying the Lord's Prayer talked about the video game Fortnite and somehow Fortnite is the kingdom? Sure. The world is filled with fighting. Crazy things happen, but when the time comes to celebrate, you have to take time to dance. Lots of great dance moves built into Fortnite. My favorite is called the Booga. Your prayer may have gotten most of the Lord's prayer wrong, but I think your prayer does what Jesus wanted you to do. Always find a way to pray, even if you don't have the words, because God just wants to hear from you. Herod wants to hear from you. (sighs) That's it for the children's sermon. Amen. And seriously, stop trash basketing people. No one likes that. I don't think we're going to have any lightning bolts from heaven from uh, messing up the Lord's Prayer that badly, but (laughs) I think that was a really beautiful illustration of how even when we don't have the right words, how God just wants to hear from us. So let's join together in this invitation to offering. In this time of offering, bring the treasure of your love. Share gifts that will bring love to God's world. Through the sharing of our gifts and our church's mission and ministry, We are building Christ's realm here on earth. Thank you for your commitment to God's work at Cumberland United Methodist Church. As a leadership team, we want to let you know that by supporting God's work at CUMC, you help discipleship to come alive in our faith community and beyond. If you're joining us in person, the easiest way to give is to drop your offering in the plate as you leave the sanctuary at the end of service. For those joining remotely, there are three easy ways to give. You can mail your offering to Cumberland UMC 219 North Musing, 
Indianapolis, Indiana 46229, or you can use online giving. To do so, simply go to www.cumberlandumc.com and scroll to the bottom of the page. With both PayPal and Givelify, you'll see prompts that ask you the amount and frequency of your giving. Both are intuitive and user-friendly, but feel free to reach out to members of our leadership team if you have any questions. God bless you and thank you for continuing to support God's work at CUMC. So the words of that song say, love, power, and grace. We experience God's love, power, and grace through the power of prayer. And so friends, how can we pray for each other? I'm going to be fake Jesse today. So. Okay. Oh, fake Jesse today. <laughs> okay. So that brings uh, the first concern. Uh, so Jesse Reed uh, was briefly hospitalized on Friday. Um, he had... He had a kidney stone, um, and so he still needs to pass that kidney stone. And so um, it's gone from the kidney to the bladder now, but it still still has got a journey. And so um, we continue to pray with Kathy uh, and with the Reed family for Jesse. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Um, from my concern, um, as you know, it's really hot out today, and yeah. and um, my mom, she's staying she's staying indoors, but she's but she's going outside for taking my do I mean mom's dog for a walk, and I'm concerned that the that the heat will will get the better of her. And I pray in concern that she doesn't pass out when when she takes her dog Sunny for a walk. And as for the praise, um, my brother is coming over to see me today. Okay, great. 
and uh, and he's and he and I are going to be spending some quality time together. So let's start off with that prayer for your mom. Uh, so as she manages these weather conditions with her sensitivity, uh, God in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for time with your brother, for family time, we say praise God. That's awesome. Hey, Gina. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I have a couple praises. Um, one that Savannah and I um, are completely better from the COVID. We both had COVID a few weeks ago. Oh, goodness. And glad I'm you're better. So glad I'm better. And my other praise is, and my prayer concern is, my granddaughter Braylon is 13 weeks pregnant. Um, she's due in February with a little girl. Okay. And I just hope, because she's already lost one baby, that she everything stays healthy and she stays healthy and um that everything goes like it should go um for her this time mm -hmm. so and also she works at the hospital that she doesn't catch monkey pox or anything because she has to work in the er so i'm just concerned that she might get sick so if everybody could just pray for her and i'm so happy that i'm gonna be a great grandma <laughs> yeah absolutely so for braylon and her um, let's see, for protection during her job and then for her pregnancy, God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uh, are you going to let him have the microphone? Yeah, today. Trouble, my... trouble. <laughs> okay, Carmel. <laughs> okay, Carmel. <laughs> today is my 65 Oh, oh, happy birthday. David, congratulations. Yeah. We praise God for you, buddy. I know that jealousy is something that God does not want us to have. Uh -oh. But Robin Potter, <laughs> I am so jealous of the pictures that you've been showing on <laughs> Facebook. I just, and I miss her but I want to wish them safe travels when they do come home. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, so praise God for Robin being able to have this time in Hawaii <laughs> and traveling prayers as she makes her way back. Holly. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna, I don't know why I wore mascara because I'm gonna cry, uh -huh. but they're good <laughs> tears. Um, Nicole went to the high-risk doctor on Friday and um, he said, you know what, the 3D machine's available, we're gonna use it. So I have a very beautiful picture of a little baby boy that looks Aww. like his brother and his daddy and his <laughs> uncle. I love he it. weighs four pounds already. And there are, there are no cysts on his umbilical cord. Aww, his abdomen, abdomen wall seems very strong. And they wanna see her one more time at the high risk doctor just to close out the session and then she'll just continue with her regular OB. So to God be the glory and thank Amen. you all for your prayers. Amen. Absolutely. Praise God. For baby Charlie. We have a couple of joys and possibly a concern. Uh, Tanya starts back to, to college tomorrow and awesome. they've reopened the, Mor the School of Mortuary Science that they had closed while she was um, going you know, for that degree. Cool. So cool. when she finishes this semester, then she'll be ready to start the School of Mortuary Science. And she's got a little anxiety because after the COVID, she doesn't feel like her brain is quite functioning as well as it did. So, so please pray for her. She starts her first day of school. Well, Tanya, congratulations on going back to school. And yeah, praise God for that. And we'll be praying for you too. We have uh, several online concerns. Okay. Uh, just a lift up uh, Lisa Crenshaw is feeling a little under the weather today but she's able to join us online so that is a, a praise and a concern in itself yeah for Lisa Crenshaw as she recovers from illness God in your mercy hear our prayer uh, Gary and Jerry Grunyard celebrated their 39th wedding anniversary yesterday oh That's awesome praise. Hey, praise God for Gary and Jerry and on that same line Jesse and I celebrate our 41st wedding anniversary tomorrow. Oh, cool. Thank you, 
<laughs> Hopefully we celebrate by passing kidney stones. <laughs> because That's we'll be one way to do it. We'll be traveling in like a week, so <laughs> flying, let's hope. So uh, we also have another one. Let me switch over to my messages here. Um, Joni asked that we pray for a friend of theirs, Kathleen, um, and her son, Scott. Kathleen was helping her son work on a car, and um, the car fell on Kathleen, and she has a skull fracture and a facial injury. Oh She'll be having gosh. some surgery, and obviously her son feels just absolutely horrible and responsible. So there's a lot of prayers there that need to be for them, and obviously for Joni and Dave, that it, you know, it, it's hard when you have friends hurting so much. So prayers all around for uh, Kathleen and Scott and Dave and Joni. Yeah, so with Dave and Joni, um, for Kathleen and Scott, we pray with you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Um, I know um, Ray is, um, they are traveling for one of their art fairs, and they said they had good weather, and they're praying for no thunderstorms today and good weather's, weather again. So, again, some travel mercies for them. Yeah, traveling mercies for Ray and... And I think that looks like all I see on there. Okay, great. Thank you. Anyone else have any other joys or concerns? Jan's got one. Well, as you know, last Sunday was our first annual family camping trip. And as you can see, we both survived it. Hey, um, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a lot of good times, a lot of laughter, and when you have two five-year-olds with you, anything goes, you know, no shoes, <laughs> you know, they were filthy, they laughed, we, I think we laughed the hardest at them. Um, my great niece is quite the outfit changer. Um, mm -hmm. At one point, she ran in their tent, came back out, and she had on her gymnastics outfit, so <laughs> anything goes when you're camping. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm glad you had such a great time enjoying uh, God's presence in nature and enjoying each other. So praise God for that. And that you were safe the whole time, too. Oh, Allison. Yeah, I'm so glad. I'll start off with a praise that I'm glad you guys are here after <laughs> wrestling with the Rona. <laughs> Um, thank you for all your prayers when we had COVID. We somehow contracted that when we went on our vacation to Alaska. Uh, but last week, but we have been with you every week on YouTube. Awesome. Which is, which is wonderful. When we were in Seattle twice and um, so when we were at home. And last week you sang Majesty. Yeah. And yeah. on August 3rd when we were sailing in between glaciers and mountains in Alaska, that's what came to my mind, was that song, Majesty. Ah, oh, beautiful, and, yeah. And it's just kind of a praise that you guys sang it last week when that's we were so home cool. and still not feeling well. So thank you, and if you ever get a chance to go, go to Alaska. We praise God that you're, you're here and, and that you had that, that moment of connection with the song, Majesty. That's so cool. Jenny's got one. Multitasking back there in the sound booth. Trying to, <laughs> trying to live up to Robin's shoes. Um, Mary Jo said Rick's surgery was canceled, but is rescheduled for this Friday, so keep That's him in right. your prayers. Yeah, so um, Rick's carpal tunnel surgery was gonna be this Friday, it's happening this upcoming Friday. So with Mary Jo and Rick, we pray with you. God in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And here we can end on a praise. Thank oh, you, Jenny, praise. for another person that's, that's stepping up and, and filling in for Robin and keeping us running. Absolutely. Praise God for you, Jenny. It is good. We're building a deep bench back there. It's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> if there are no other joys or concerns, we'll continue in worship.
continue. Friends, let us pray. Gracious and merciful Creator, you are strong and gentle, fierce and tender. We thank you for being a God unlimited by our human boundaries. God of love, we surrender to you our shriveling anxieties and our countless fears. For those who find themselves crippled by painful memories from the past, or those who find themselves frozen by uncertainties about the future, remind them that you are a God of daily bread. Meet us once more, we pray. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Christ, when you walked the earth, you were a man of narrative and a teller of parables. Inspire us with breath and boldness to speak our stories. Draw us together with a spirit of curiosity and humility because we all are sharing in the same story. Grant us one day a world relentless in pursuit of justice, compassion, and kindness. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Perfecting spirit, we ask for the wisdom to remember that no amount of common ground will save us if we believe that difference is dangerous. Pour over us. We pray with the patience and perseverance to hold with respect the experiences of those whom we disagree. In a violent and divided world, bless our differences to bear fruit rather than arms, for our humanity is bound together and our lives are inseparably intertwined. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now let's pray as Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And now our praise team will lead us in the Lord's Prayer.
Our scripture for today comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, verses 5 through 15. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. They love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners so that people will see them. I assure you, that's the only reward they'll get. But when you pray, Go to your room, shut the door, and pray to your Father who is present in that secret place. Your Father who sees what you do in secret will reward you. When you pray, don't pour out a flood of empty words as the Gentiles do. They think that by saying many words they'll be heard. Don't be like them, because your Father knows what you need before you ask. Pray like this, our Father, who is in heaven, uphold the holiness of your name. Bring in your kingdom so that your will is done on earth as it's done in heaven. Give us the bread we need for today. Forgive us for the ways we have wronged you, just as we forgive those who have wronged us. And don't lead us in temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. If you forgive others their sins, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you don't forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your sins. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This sermon is entitled, Our Daily Bread. So who here has ever been in an argument online, on Facebook or Twitter or social media? Show of hands, Jacob, anyone else? Okay, a few, a few of you have been in some arguments online. Ever feel just exhausted and feel like it was a waste of time afterwards? So whenever I'm in a situation where I know someone's ideology and political beliefs are completely different from mine, and I don't want to get into an intense disagreement, I look for safe topics of conversation. So one such safe topic is food. Everyone has to eat in order to survive, and besides that, there's this real, simple human pleasure in eating delicious food. So oftentimes I'll talk about food from Jamaica, where both of my parents are from. There's jerk chicken, which is this blend of 13 different spices, including allspice, cinnamon, and scotch bonnet peppers, which are really spicy. Uh, there's ackee, which is this breakfast dish that looks like scrambled eggs, but really comes from the fruit of an ackee tree. Uh, there's salted codfish, oxtails, plantain, and sorrel. And uh, if you're wondering, if you're starting to feel hungry, I, I promise I won't go on too long with the sermon. But there's also this hibiscus tea, which is infused with ginger that's absolutely delicious. Or I'll talk about my wife's family's food, uh, pozole soup, uh, tamales, sopes, and tacos, uh, or uh, this, this enchilada that's specific to her hometown that's made of, um, made of cheese, a cheese enchilada. But after talking, I'll listen. I'll spend time learning of new foods, and new places in the city to try new things. Food connects us as human beings. 
That's why we have entire television networks devoted to food. And food can connect us even when the barriers of culture and language separate us. So today, I can speak enough Spanish to express most ideas, even if I don't always have the vocabulary that I'd want to. But most importantly, I can understand enough Spanish to know if my in-laws are making fun of me or not, which is glad I made it to that point. But before I learned much Spanish, I, I'd still gather for meals at the abuela's table, the grandmother's table, with 30 to 40 of Bede's family members. I'd enjoy a delicious meal. And something about eating a meal together it lessened the distance between us, and it brought us together much like Holy Communion does. But instead of bread and wine, it was enchiladas and Coca-Cola. But the effect was the same. There was something special about broken bread together. And food was just as necessary for the disciples, too. As traveling preachers and teachers, sometimes they didn't know where their next meal was coming from. Oftentimes, it would come from the generosity of strangers they'd encounter in the towns they visited. They'd receive their daily bread from God through the hands of a stranger. So this idea of praying for daily bread, it wasn't new. When the Israelites wandered in the desert for 40 years, they did not survive off of their hunting skills or their gathering skills. They didn't have the technology like guns that would allow them to regularly take down large animals. As far as ve vegetation goes, not much grew in the desert. They survived off of bread from heaven, as it's called, or manna. And each day they were to collect their manna, not storing up more than for one day, trusting that God would provide the next day and the next day. And God did, and God continues to provide. And so much of this message has been around the concept of food. Daily bread, however, is more than just food. Daily bread speaks to all the ways that God provides for God's children. When the disciples were saying, give us this day our daily bread, they were asking God to provide for their needs outside of just food. Yes, they were asking for food, but they were also asking for shelter and clothes and whatever else they direly needed. But more than just needs for survival, they were praying for God's presence and providence. They were praying for grace-filled moments along the way. Daily bread, it's a symbol. A symbol of all the ways that God provides for us. Ways that we are blessed so that we can be a blessing to others. And it's a blessing to be at a church like Cumberland, a church that practices weekly communion. Something about gathering at the Lord's table every week reminds us that we are dependent on the grace that we are constantly receiving from God. Daily bread and poured out wine, or poured out Welch's if you're a good Methodist. A symbol of God's providence and grace towards us. So oftentimes when I'm at the communion table and I'm leading the prayer that follows communion, God puts it on my heart to say something along the lines of, grant that we who have received grace do not hoard grace to ourselves, but rather give us the courage to impart your grace to the world. Give us this day our daily bread. Our daily bread that we receive, whether it's food or clothes or money or a car, or anything else material, it's not so that we can hoard it to ourselves, but we receive these things so that we can be a blessing to others. Because most of the time, daily bread is not something material. It takes the form of grace, of love, of justice, of mercy. We receive our daily portion, and that's enough for us to live off of and to share with the world. I think there's a reason that this part of the Lord's Prayer is situated in the place that it is. Right after the language of the kingdom of God and right before 
how we relate to others. This daily bread reminds us that like manna, our daily bread comes from the kingdom of heaven. The blessings we receive are so that we can be in right and reconciled relationship with others, forgiven and forgiving, giving and receiving grace. So let us give thanks to the God of our daily bread, whether it's a slice of bread or a piece of Jamaican jerk chicken, whether it's a house to live in or a car to drive, whether it's the warmth of biological family or the love of a church community, whether it's the presence of God in a baby's smile or a refreshing walk in nature. Daily bread is God's gift to us. And so for incredible gifts that God gives to us, for God's grace and mercy, let us forever be thankful. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please remain seated as we join in this song in preparation for communion.
Friends, let us receive the grace at this table. God of grace, we confess our uncertainty. We are unsure of ourselves, so we cease to take risks. We feel uncertain whom we should serve, so we neglect to serve those who are before us. In seasons of doubt, we grow uncertain that you are even with us to guide us. Awaken us to your presence and renew us by your grace. Amen. Truly God is our hope, our trust, even from our birth. Christ has saved you and Christ has saved me. You are loved, you are forgiven, you will be made whole. Amen. And as forgiven and reconciled people, let us join together at Christ's table. It was on the night in which Christ was betrayed that he took bread, and after giving thanks, broke it and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. As often as you eat this bread, do so in remembrance of me. Friends, let us partake in the body of Christ. Likewise, when supper was over, Christ took the cup, and after giving thanks, poured it out, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for all, for the remission of sins. As often as you drink this cup, do so in remembrance of me. Friends, let us partake in the poured out blood of Christ. And friends, let us pray. Holy and gracious God, you form us in your image and you breathe into us the breath of life. God, we thank you that even when we feel like we're on our own, how you're always with us. Thank you for daily bread, ways in which we experience your grace through material things and through that which transcends words. God, grant that we who receive your grace Grant that we may not be those who hoard grace to ourselves, but God, give us courage, courage to impart your grace to a world that needs it. And we ask this in the name of Jesus the Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. Let's stand and let's sing our closing song, Hymn of Promise. In the bulletin, it's listed as page 701. It is actually 707.
pursue God's ways, righteousness, holy living, faithfulness, love, endurance, and gentleness. Share the abundance of God's gifts with others. Remember that God is our refuge, the one we can trust. No matter what, no matter when, God will be with you. In the name of our triune God, Father, Spirit, Son, and if you so.